Okay, so um, we're going to go all the way back to even the most basic trig ideas, uh, which of course meant all the way back to, gee, this is probably grade 9 for you guys. So if we have an angle here, that's supposed to be a theta. It doesn't really show up that well in the picture, but um, that's supposed to be a theta. And so is this one here. Oh, you can see it in that one. Must be the scaling. So the very, very, very basics that you should remember all the way back from grade 9. This is the opposite side. Um, the one across from 90 degrees, that's the hypotenuse. And the other side, which is shared with the angle and the hypotenuse, that is the adjacent. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll just quickly do this. I'm assuming that there's no issues here. Maybe just a quick jog of memory. And then this would be the adjacent side if the angle moved. So then, you were taught your favorite English sentence, which was, anybody remember? Sokotoa, so yeah, that's, true. that's the one. So you probably remember this as Sokotoa, where we said sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so that's probably grade 9 slash 10. Um, then we didn't really do much trig in grade 11, but uh, here's the new ratios you probably haven't heard of. Okay. So, the cusk, the sec, and the cot. Yeah, well, let me tell you what they mean, okay? The first of all, the CSC, this is the cosecant. So this is how you would say it in English, cosecant. And the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. Okay. The secant is the adjacent, oops, sorry, it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And then the last one is the cotangent, which is the uh, adjacent over the opposite. So, do you know, oops, sorry. Do you notice anything about uh, these new ratios, the cosecant, secant, and tan cotangent? Yeah, what's that mean? They're, they're, they're flipped and reciprocals, okay? So um, these ones, for example, if you look at hypotenuse and opposite, that's what you get here, okay? So that's the case for each one of them. There's a connection that you should make, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is connect these two together, these two together, and these two together. They are the pairs. They're related by a reciprocal. Now, one thing that helps me remember when I'm, you know, until you get familiar with these, exactly uh, how they get paired up, one thing that's kind of nice is there's only one co between each pair. So, for example, there's a cosecant and a sine. There's a cosine and a secant. There's a cotangent and a tangent. So there's only one co that gets paired together. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's, I whatever. I, I, I think it works because uh, you only have one co prefix. But here's the other way that you can remember uh, how they're connected. Um, from Sokotoa, now you get Choshakao. <laughs> okay. Which of course it means nothing, just like Sokotoa does. But if you say it like with meaning and purpose, maybe someone will believe that you're, you know, that you're actually saying something of meaning. But choshakao <laughs> will be your cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent is adjacent <laughs> over opposite. Okay. So um, this one is again another, and I, I, I do it on purpose to make you laugh because then hopefully you'll remember it because um, sokatoa. That means the sine is connected to the cosecant, right? And then the cosine is connected to the secant, right? You can also pair them up that way. And it also tells you what we just did there with the writings on them. So um, another handy way to think of these is since they're the reciprocal, this is another handy way to think of them. Uh, I guess we don't need the whole word. One over the cosine and one over the tangent. So we'll see these pop up. Um, in fact, these are on your provincial exam formula sheet, these ones right here. 
those three are on there, so we will see them quite a bit, but here's where they kind of come from. Okay. Anybody want to say Cho Cho Cow? There you go. Does it feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's our first big idea today. Okay. So the first big idea, we're going to take a look again at the unit circle. So this is the unit circle. So I'll just illustrate here. This point is the point one zero. So the radius of that circle is radius one. That's always what we mean when we say unit circle. Circle with radius one. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, and again, I don't know why the, it doesn't display the theta quite right, but that's supposed to be a theta. But let's just say that I walked out on the circle, and I'm standing on the unit circle at some arbitrary spot. Okay. And normally we would say those are the coordinates x and y. Okay. Now one thing you might notice is I can actually create a triangle. So I'm doing my triangle in purple here that links that point to the unit circle. Okay, I drop from the point straight down to the x-axis and then straight back to the origin. Okay. That gives me a little triangle. Can anybody uh, maybe tell me anything I could label about this triangle? Sure, Eamon. The hypotenuse is one. Good, okay, the hypotenuse is one. The radius of the circle is one, so this must also be a one. Now the other two aren't so obvious, so I'm gonna help you out, unless anyone thinks they can Okay, um, if you think about it right now, what's happened is if I move this far out, that's the x coordinate there, so I could label this as x. Okay, that's the distance I've moved away to get to this coordinate. And how high up I've gone here, the length of that side of the triangle is y. So if I'm at this point here, x, y, then that means the lengths of the triangle have to be x and y. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to try and connect this circle with a triangle because that way we tr introduce triangles, we can talk about sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, with just a circle, you, it's not obvious how there's a, the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios inside of a circle. Okay, so. Let's just look at our triangle, which is connected to the unit circle. And let's see, can we write an expression for the sine of that angle in there? Sure, else. Why? Yeah, so the sine is going to be opposite, which is y over hypotenuse, which is 1. What about cosine? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, so the cosine is x over 1, or just x. And how about tangent? How could you write an expression for tangent? How about from the east side? Dylan, you got a, uh, an idea? Uh, sine x over cosine x. Sine x over cosine x. That is correct, but uh, you, must have, you must have some prior knowledge here. Just use the triangle for me. There we go. Okay, so tangent theta is y over x. All we're doing now is we're just trying to look at the triangle, okay? So if tangent is y over x, and cosine is x, and sine is y, then what else did you find, Dylan? Um, it's sine x uh, yeah, over cos. Yeah, sine over cos. So this is another important identity. It does also appear on the formula sheet. But nothing other than what I, we just did with sine over cosine appears on the formula sheet. So we're going to put a highlighter on this one because it's important. Okay? So sine x equals to y, cos x equals, sorry, cos theta equals to x, and tangent is y over x. Okay. Okay, so the... Um, point that we have up here also, instead of labeling it x, y, this same point could, whoops, that's a highlighter, one second. This point here could be labeled cosine of theta, sine of theta. So here's what we need to, uh, it usually helps if we write this down because it's kind of weird and, and a lot of times at this point most people are like, okay, I have no idea why we're doing this or what it's for. 
So um, that's okay, but uh, hopefully it becomes a little clearer later in our lesson. For this example, what we've just found is that the x-coordinate on the unit circle is connected to the cosine of the angle whose terminal arm has that x-coordinate. Okay. So let me just tell you what I mean is up here, we could say x. We could also say that's the cosine of theta. If the angle is this angle here, it has a terminal arm that goes through that coordinate for x. Similarly, we could say this for y. The y value is connected to the sine of the angle that is made. Okay. So at this point, the idea is going to be used for the rest of the lesson. So what I need you to do is I need you to connect the x-coordinate on a unit circle with the cosine of the angle, the y-coordinate with the sine of the angle. Okay? You can boil it down to basically two things here, but you must uh, be able to bring those facts back up. Okay. Okay. So here's how we can use this idea. Here's the first important idea. We need to be able to connect these four points on the unit circle. Okay, so here's the four points on this row. Um, one, two, three, four. Back to the angles they came from. So let me show you what I mean with the first example. The cosine of pi over 2. Okay. Let's go back up to the unit circle. Okay. And if I have the cosine of pi over 2, then um, first of all, where's pi over 2 on that unit circle? Hmm. Kathy? Um, What's that? Yeah, well, wh how would you describe the angle pi over 2? Where is it on that unit circle? It's at the top, right? <laughs> so uh, here's pi over 2 right there. Okay, That's the angle pi over 2. Okay. What are the coordinates on the unit circle for the angle pi over 2? 1, 0, or sorry, zero, zero, 1, yeah. Yeah, so... This angle is going to be connected to those two values, 0 and 1. Okay. So if I'm looking for cosine, which coordinate matters most to me? The x-coordinate does. Cosine is connected to x. Sine is connected to y. So that means the cosine is going to take on this value, 0. Okay. So cosine of pi over 2, that has the value 0. So I'm going to get you to try the sine of 3 pi over 2, which again, it means where are you on the unit circle and which coordinate means, you know, is the most important to you. So take a look and see what you come up with. Okay, so if I was to show you here, here is the angle at 3 pi over 2. It's this line, well, let me make a better one. It's this line right here. So what are the coordinates that it touches on the unit circle? 0, negative 1. Okay, so if I wanted the sine, what's the value for the sine going to be at that point? Negative 1. It's connected to the y coordinate. So that means the sine of 3 pi over 2 would be equal to negative 1. Okay. So the last one we'll do is the tangent of pi. So tangent of pi, that means I'm at this angle right out here. I touch the unit circle at the coordinates negative 1 and 0. So how would I use that co those coordinates negative 1 and 0 to figure out what tangent's value would be? 
y over x, so that means it's going to be 0 divided by negative 1, so the value will be 0. Okay, so the tangent of pi, that's equal to 0. Okay. 